Our story begins 250 million years ago in the Triassic period, in a world which was very different to the one we see today. Reptilian life dominated on land until a mass extinction event on the PT boundary took place. The Permian-Triassic mass extinction event paved the way for small creatures known as cynodonts to emerge. This PT extinction wiped out 70% of all terrestrial species on the planet. The aftermath of this mass extinction provided the evolution of new ecological strategies and morphological adaptations. During this time, they began diverging away from their reptilian ancestors, thus marking the beginning of the evolution of mammals. Cynodonts evolved from therapsid reptiles and began to show morphological adaptations which are still used to characterise modern day mammals. Changes to the cynodont lower jaw and skull are still witnessed in the fossil record today. These changes are the first known evidence of the divergence of cynodonts from their reptilian ancestors. Reptiles possess a homodont dentition, which means their teeth are all the same. The differentiation of cynodont teeth was an important innovation in mammal evolution. This is known as heterodont dentition, and it allowed for a wider variety of feeding strategies to take place. Changes to dentition meant changes to the structure of the lower jaw. The number of bones present in the lower jaw becomes reduced to just the dentary and squamosal bones. Other bones which previously played a role in the lower jaw migrated upwards and are now known as the anvil and hammer of the inner ear. Early cynodonts such as Morganucodon and Castrocauda were just some of the first cynodonts to exhibit these mammalian traits. Hair and fur are defining characteristics of mammals. The acquisition of this feature is seen as one of the main evolutionary innovations which led to their success. Before the development of hair, animals possess a tough, scaly, watertight skin and they were cold-blooded animals. They were restricted to the daytime because at night, when it got cold, they became sluggish and couldn't hunt. Animals that possessed a coat of fur allowed them to regulate their body temperatures and with this insulation, they could be active and hunt at night. The exact period where hair fur developed is still not known for certain, as it is so difficult to find a fossil with traces of hair in it. More recent studies have found traces of hair in animal copper lights, essentially fossilised dung, which date back more than 250 million years ago. The oldest undisputed known evidence of hair or fur dates to around 160 million years ago. This is seen in the extremely well-preserved fossil of Castrocauda and Megaconus. Castrocauda was a semi-aquatic, beaver-like genus that possessed a fur pelt and although this mammaliform is not a direct ancestor of modern-day mammals, is an extremely close relative. The Megaconus has been nicknamed the Jurassic Squirrel. They were a group of ground-living animals which may be the most primitive mammaliforms to possess fur. The evolutionary journey of hair through time is still relatively unknown. This feature has been such an important adaptation by early mammals and has without a doubt been a major player in the success of this group. As therapsids evolved into cynodonts, there was a number of changes to the shoulders and the arms. While early synapsids had really strong limbs, they were sprawled out to the sides of their bodies like reptiles today. As cynodonts did emerge, they had longer and thinner limbs and they were held underneath their body in a more kind of erect posture. This transition gave them an advantage in the terrestrial world and has led to a diversity of locomotion in mammals. The arrival of the Jurassic period saw cynodonts give rise to the first true mammals. They were still quite primitive, but they would later evolve into modern mammals we see today. Between the mid-Jurassic and the early Cretaceous, two major splits occurred in the mammal lineage. The first split occurred in the mid-Jurassic, with the appearance of basal monitoring groups, and the second split occurred in the early Cretaceous, with the divergence of basal placental and marsupial forms. At this period of time, 
Mammals are still only small creatures and the terrestrial world is not dominated by dinosaurs until the KT mass extinction event. This mass extinction is hotly debated today as scientists are still unsure what it was caused by. Some argue that a massive asteroid impact could have caused a mass extinction as it led to a multi-year impact winter, which blocked out all sunlight. Another theory is that extensive volcanism released large amounts of toxic gases into the atmosphere, thus altering the chemistry and composition of the atmosphere and oceans. After the KT mass extinction event, mammals began to grow larger bodies and fully exploit new niches. This has allowed them to explode in diversity and become the dominant life form on the planet. This is most evident in the Cenozoic era. Within the Cenozoic era, several forms of extreme mammal diversification appeared. This included the movement of mammals to the marine world and the only flying mammals. Mammals began to grow larger in size and thus this era marked the beginning of the rise of megafaunal groups. Mammals such as Paraceratherium, the ground sloth, and woolly mammoths were over 20 feet in length and were just some examples of the huge body sizes mammals were growing to. The defining characteristics of mammals evolved over millions of years. Without the development made to jaw and dentition, and the innovation of hair and larger brains, and the transition to a more erect posture, many mammals would not have survived to the present. Their adaptations and evolutionary journey led to the success of the modern mammals which we see today.